What if every time you wanted to make a change to your scene file, you didn't have to break it out into a new file? You could put as many different versions of your file in one scene file. You can do that using takes. Let's take a look. What's up everybody, Chad here from grayscalegorilla.com where we bring you the tools, training, and tutorials you need to make yourself a better motion designer. Today's video, we're gonna talk all about the Cinema 4D Take System. The Take System is often overlooked. It's kind of a hidden feature. Not a lot of people talk about it. I personally love it. I find it to be a really great way to organize my scene and give my clients a bunch of different versions without having a bunch of different scene files. It's gonna allow you to maybe think a little bit more about how you can streamline your process and not pollute your hard drive with a bunch of gigantic files. So let's jump in and see what Cinema 4D takes can do for you. Okay, so here we are in Cinema. We've got a pretty simple scene going on. We've got uh, some chair models and let's, we're just gonna pretend that we're putting together a print ad and we have like three different chairs that we need to show our client. We have uh, this one right here and then we have uh, this one, which is called the, uh, the O2 Armchair Rocker by Vitra Eames. We've got this About a Chair, which is really interesting, cool looking chair by, uh, I think the, how do you pronounce that? I guess it's He Welling. Um, and we're gonna put together all these different images, these different renders using takes, because we don't wanna have three different scenes for three different chairs, and we don't wanna have to sit there and remember what setting we used on what render and what camera we used, what text we used, all that sort of thing. So we're gonna control this entire scene delivering a bunch of different assets to our client using takes. So first off, what are takes? Let's just go down to where I have the takes tabbed over here. Now, they might be in a different spot for you. I've just got a, a, a work a layout here working with uh, Octane, so it'll be easier for me. So what are takes? Takes are essentially different overrides that you can use to create multiple variations of your scene in one scene. So imagine having a bunch of different versions of a scene all sitting within one uh, Cinema 4D file using takes to kind of switch between the two. Now, the takes over here, this is this is the takes view over here. You can see there's a couple different ways that you can view them. You can view them as like what I've got here, which is the uh, dual tree mode. You can also use just the simple override mode, which will have all your takes in this drop down, or you can use the take tree mode, which is kind of uh, a stripped down version. I like to use the dual tree because it shows me my takes and then it shows me what actually is taking place, what's changing on a take to take basis over here on the right. So the first thing we're going to do, we need to create a take. Um, and right now we've got one already built for us. It's called main. So let's just, um, let's create a uh, new take and I'm just going to click the new take button. And we're going to call this uh, the, our first chair, which is going to be 01 underscore about a chair. So we want to make sure that when we see when we have this take selected, that's the that's the render the uh, the object that's going to be rendering. Okay, so before I do anything else, I'm not even going to assign anything to this take. I didn't even override anything. I'm just going to go ahead and create uh, three takes that are going to uh, all be numbered like my chairs. Okay, so let's create another take. We'll drop it down here. Double click. O2. This one's going to be armchair rocker and we're going to name that one O2. Great. And we'll grab another take. And this one we're going to call O3. This one's kind of a funny name. It's S293. And I went ahead and made sure that all of the chairs have little annotation tags so I don't remember what I need to type into the um, into the text on this text object that I have up here. Okay, so we've built out these takes. We haven't actually set any, any overrides yet, so everything is pretty much standard. Everything's gonna be inheriting what this main take has open right now. So um, with, the, uh, with this take active, the about a share take, there's a couple different ways that we could record the turning on and off of these layers because I have everything broken on layers. I'm a huge fan of using layers to organize my scene. You can see here I've got uh, all the chairs broken out into different layers and the text as well. So the first thing I'm going to do in this first take is I'm going to need to make sure that that 
layer is visible, which it is because that's actually the that's the way it is on my main take. If I activate my main take, you can see that is the that is the um, take that is active. So there's a, I'm going to show you the there's two different ways to create overrides, and I'm going to show you one of the simpler ways, but you have to be careful of this way because it's a little bit tricky. It's it's this auto record kind of function. It's called auto take. So if I were to enable auto take, let's say selecting the O1 uh, take here. It's going to record any changes that I make and put them into this take. So with that one selected, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, well, actually, let's just undo that or turn that off. I want to go into my second take here, my O2, and I'm going to turn on the auto take, and then I'm going to basically turn on my other chair, my O2 chair, and I might have to refresh uh, octane here so that it knows. Okay, so this is my second chair, and I'm going to turn off auto take. And you're going to see here over in uh, in this in this take view, you can see where it's created this little uh, category layers, and it's going to show me what I've done in that take. So right there, I basically told it, okay, I want the um, I want the uh, about a chair to be false in terms of visibility of the editor and render view. Same thing goes with the O2 uh, rocker. Now, if I go back into this main take, you're going to see it goes back to our main state. So if I came into this main state and said, okay, well, you know, I need to actually change this because maybe this main state, I don't want any chairs visible to the renderer at all. Okay, so let's just refresh that. And I have no chairs at all. So this will be like a, this might be like a, a reset or a blank state. So now it's going to inherit. Remember, it's inheriting everything that's above it. So if I go to the next take and I activate it, it's going to say, well, I was just inheriting what you had in the main take and you turned everything off. So I don't know what you want to show me. So how do we get that back? Well, let's go ahead and do that. Let's turn on our auto take again. And we're going to go ahead and activate our O1 chair in the viewport and in the renderer. And I'll kick Octane in the butt again. And there it is. And I'm going to turn off the auto take. Now you can see, now I've got the base properties of that layer being recorded. If I go into layer two, I've got O2, as I've already set. If I go into layer three, however, it's going to default since I haven't changed anything. And layer three, or sorry, take this take three here, this S293, is inheriting whatever is happening before it, which in this case is the main. So I haven't told it yet to turn off those other layers or turn on the proper layer, I should say. So with that selected, I'm going to go ahead and say auto take, and I'm going to turn on this chair. And I'll kick Octane in the butt again, make it cook, and there we go. All right, great. I'm going to turn off auto take, and we should see now that we've got these visible. Uh, we've got the. We were basically telling it to make that layer visible in the renderer and in the editor. Now, if I step through these three takes, boom and boom, you see. Remember when I went back to this one? I had to actually turn off that other take. So we don't need this anymore. That's what's great about takes. You can come in here and edit these after they've been done. In fact, I could come in here and double click this and like that actually will allow me to uh, change that parameter right there. But in this case, we don't need this take right here, this little part of this take, because this is already gonna be turned off. So what does that mean? I'm gonna actually show you. I'm gonna delete this. I'm just gonna hit delete key. Oops, and let's re undo that. And let's go ahead and try that again. There we go. And now, because we didn't need that, um, it, it was kind of redundant. So if I go back to my main, we're empty, right? I hit my first take, chair one is on. I set my second take, chair two is on, and chair three. So that is a really simple way to break out each individual element into a take. Now, we're going to take it one step further and we're gonna go a little bit deeper because this is, auto takes is just one way of capturing a take. And it's actually, um, sometimes it can be dangerous if you forget to leave it on, you forget that you le left it on and you start recording all kinds of different things. That's why the override method is also a really good method to use. In this case, okay, we want to create an override because if I go to O2, it's not O2 up here, it doesn't say O2, our title is still saying O1, and it's the name of that previous chair, and we need to update this. We need to update this text to, to reflect this chair. So I am going to go ahead and activate every chair in my uh, object lister here, and we're gonna find that chair, and that chair is going to be the armchair rocker, and I'm gonna go into my little about tab here, my little info tab, and it's armchair rocker by Vitra Eames. Okay, so that's what I know I want that text to say. So I'm gonna go into the text controller, and under chair number, 
I'm going to come over to the text and I'm going to right click and I'm going to tell it to override. Now what that does is it tells it, it tells uh, Cinema 4D that this is a parameter that I want to override in this active take. So I'm going to change this number to 2, okay? And it updates. There it is. Okay. Now I'm going to go into the chair name and I'm also going to do a right click and oh, it's already actually uh, let me turn it over right on that so I can activate that. And this one is called the rocker, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go back. I want to make sure I don't get that wrong. Armchair rocker. So let's go back in here. Armchair rocker. Okay, armchair rocker. It's the name of our chair. And then we're going to go into the bottom line and we're going to create an override for this one. And it's going to be by Vitra. Oops, got my all caps on. Vitra Ames. Okay, there we go. And now, um, because we had to, we created those overrides by hand, we don't have to worry about turning off the auto take. And I can go back into my take one, and you can see we've got our about a chair by He Welling and the correct chair showing there. We go to take two, we've got armchair rocker by Vitra Eames rocking there. So let's, we're gonna do the same thing to chair three. So I'm gonna go into the chair three uh, text here, and I'm gonna find my text over here. We're gonna go to chair number. And we're going to create an override here. And this one is going to be three. And we're going to do the same thing to the text on this one and call it, this one I believe is called S293. S293. And the bottom line who it's by, it's going to be, I forget the guy's name. So I'm going to go into that thing and Balzar Besco. All right. So let's go ahead and type that in there. Uh, how the hell do you spell that? Balaz, Balzar Besco, Balzar Besco, okay. So it's gonna be Balzar Besco. Cool, so now that's updated there. Great, so if we did this right, now we can go back to our main take, which is just gonna be a default. In fact, we could t tell the main take not to even use uh, about a chair um, at all, or the title rather, um, but for right now, I'm just going to leave it. So we've got our number one is about a chair by Hell uh, He Wheeling, Welling, and then we've got the O2 Armchair Rocker by Vitra Ames. We've got the O3 S293 by Balzar Besco, and it's the correct chair. Great. We're looking good. Um, so now let's have a little bit more fun, and let's say for whatever reason, uh, we also had a different camera angle that we wanted to render out for these guys. So how would we do that? So the best way to do that is, um, it's pretty simple actually. We could do a couple different things. We could make a child take of these guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this guy and I'm gonna create a, I'm gonna write, I'm just right clicking here. I'm gonna say new child take. And in this one, I'm gonna call it uh, 01 alt cam, okay? And you can see there's a little camera icon right here. So I am going to, you can see I've already created this alternate camera angle. And all I'm gonna do is tell this, this take to use this alternate camera angle that I've, that I've created, which is just kind of this artsy angle that maybe somebody could lay out some type two uh, in Photoshop or whatnot right there. So again, it's gonna inherit anything that I do to this take above it. So it's, it's always gonna be a child of this take. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the armchair rocker. Let's go ahead and make that guy active and we'll make a new child take of this. And we're gonna call this one O2 alt cam. There it is. And we'll do the same thing down here. Right click this guy, new child take. This one's gonna be O3 alt cam. Great, so now let's go ahead and pick these cameras as our alt cameras. Okay, great. So let's go back into our main take, or sorry, into our first take, which is 01. And you can see I can go there and then I can click on the alt cam to give us our alt cam take. And then I can do the armchair rocker and the armchair rocker uh, alt camera, and then the S293 and then the S293's alt uh, camera angle. So that's how you would handle different camera angles. Now there's also, it's not just tied down to cameras and layers. You can change just about any attribute you can think of. So let's say for whatever reason, um, our client said, okay, this is great, but in the armchair rocker, I want to create an alt version where it's not black, it's maybe um, 
blue. Okay, so the base of the chair here is not going to be black, it'll be blue. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's just make a child of this, and we're going to say new child take, and we're going to call this one O2 alt color. And with that take active, I'm going to go into my uh, material browser here, and I'm going to find that material, which is going to be the... Uh, what's the name of that one? That one is the armchair rocker, which is going to be, let's see if I can just go over here and find that guy. Uh, I believe it's the armchair rocker, right? Yes. Okay. So here it is. I'm going to get into that material. All right. So there it is. I'm going to go into my octane node editor here and let's go ahead and get the active material. Okay, great. So we want to change the color of this guy in this take. So I'm gonna create an override. So I'm gonna go into the diffuse color of this uh, material and I'm gonna right click color and I'm gonna say override. And now I am just going to pick a color. Let's go ahead, what's the color did we say? It was gonna be kind of a blue, but I feel like it needs to be a little bit kind of like this color a lot. This is kind of a cool color for this chair. I like that. Awesome. So now I can go back into my takes and that's all good to go. I can go back into my main take and it's black of that chair. I can go into this little alt take where I made it blue. And then of course we still have our alt camera. So that is a way where you can change and always you can come in here and see what's actually happening. In fact, I could twirl down into that exact number and change my, uh, my color right here if I wanted to. I'm not going to do that. Oh, I'm going to move on and talk a little bit about animation. So let's say, you know, we did this, uh, we did this for print, but let's say we want to maybe add a little animation to it and we wanted to have a couple different versions of that in one file. Um, okay, so how do we do that? Well, you can see I've got my text controller here, or sorry, my um, chair rotation controller, and you can see I've got it set up so I can rotate my chairs pretty easily. I'm going to use Signal, which is a Grayscale Gorilla plugin available on our site, um, to rotate the chair a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and add the Signal tag to the rot chair rotation null. I'm going to grab the, uh, the H and drag it on there. Perfect. And let's go ahead and start to set this up. Okay. So I'm going to go into my main take on this one, which is just going to um, allow me to create my animation that I'm going to vary on the different takes. So right now I don't want to, I just want to go negative 30 to 30, something pretty simple. And let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to have it ping pong and it'll ping pong in 45 frames. Let's go ahead and just play this down. So there it is kind of looping. Got a nice little loop going. Maybe we're going to create a GIF or something of this. All right, so now if I go into like this chair and I hit play, we've got a nice little animation going on of our chair rotating. Perfect. Okay, so that is looking good. But let's say for whatever reason on the, let's try the, let's do the S, S293. Let's say the S293, uh, the client wants to the chair to actually rotate a little bit further so that you can see maybe a little bit more of a profile view of that chair. Not a problem. So with that take selected, I'm going to just create a child take of this and we're just gonna say new child and we're gonna say 03 alt animation there. Okay, so with that selected, I'm gonna grab my, my, uh, my signal tag here. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. And we are just gonna change the uh, start and end. So let's create an override here and create an override here. And in this one, it's gonna be negative 60 to 60, okay? So on this one, this chair, for whatever reason, the client wants to see more of the back of that chair. So now we've got uh, a version that goes a little bit further back. If I were to suddenly, let me go ahead and save this just in case it dies. And let's go ahead and save that. And now while it's playing here, I'm just gonna swap back out to the main version of that chair. So I created an alt take of this chair's animation as a child of its main uh, take here so that I could have a version of it acting just like the other chairs in case the client changes their mind. Let me go ahead and pause the IPR so it goes a little faster. Um, but I also have this, this child take here with this alt animation where the chair rotation goes a little bit further so that uh, you, can, you can tweak that. So again, 
Uh, in one scene file, I've created, let's just count them, and there could be way more than this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different versions of this file, and this is just scratching the surface of takes um, in one scene file. And if at any point the client changes their mind, everything is right here, very easy to update, very easy to change out. Uh, so again, uh, takes are awesome. I highly recommend experimenting with them, playing with them. Um, oh, uh, before I go, let me just show you, I showed you the views before, but this is kind of nice. Some, sometimes you just want to work in this override mode, which is kind of interesting. So you can select the takes from this drop down, which is kind of nice if you wanted to work that way and just see what's going on in your main take and all these other takes. But I actually prefer to work in the dual tree just because it's a little bit easier for my brain to understand. So again, play around with takes, see what you think of them. Uh, tell me what you're able to do with them in the, in the comments below. Uh, if you have any cool tricks for using takes, I'd love to hear them. Uh, I plan on doing a video very soon about outputting these takes and uh, going over a really cool way to never have to rent output or name your output again using takes uh, and some of the token systems. So look for that video soon and I will see you next time. Welcome back everybody. Hope you got something out of takes because I really like takes. It's a lot of fun to kind of figure out ways to streamline your process and not have a bunch of scene files hanging around on your hard drive. So on your next project, I challenge you to use takes and try to find a way to work it into your workflow and kind of get used to how it works. I think that's the best way to use something is kind of force yourself to use it. And then pretty soon you'll find that you're using it all the time and you can't live without it. Um, if you have a really cool use for takes, hit me in the comments below. I'd love to know how you're using it and what you're doing with it. Um, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. As always, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Ever wish that you could take a bunch of different versions of your cinema? What if you had... 4D... Yeah.